Okay, so we're live on Facebook. Cool. Okay. Yeah. So it always, um, you know the way people stare in because they don't know they're live for ages. I just, yeah. that's hilarious. <laughs> am I live? Am I live? Am I live? Am I live? Am I on? <laughs> so it looks like we're alive. We're alive. So um, I, uh, hello, all you positive life heads. I hope you're having a good day and I hope a few of you have joined us here. But um, if you're catching it on the replay, that's cool too. I'm here with the amazing O'Neill sisters. We've got two of them. One of them is off having a baby. She is. I can't believe it. Yeah. Amazing. So um, it's her first baby and she's having a baby today. So there's three sisters. We got Fiona and Evangeline with us here today. And Naomi is the girl who's having the baby, right? Okay. Oh, yeah. so I did a, I done a tiny bit of research, maybe like five minutes. Okay. <laughs> so I know who I'm talking to. So it's great to have you both here today. Um, I'll tell you what the story is. So in the spiritual community in Ireland, it's like you guys have kind of appeared, like, as I said earlier, like characters out of a fairy tale okay and i don't really know much about you and i just thought let's get on and do an article in the magazine and have a chat with you both and find out all about you and how this all happened so the very place to begin is the beginning right so tell us how music came into all your lives and how three sisters decided to sing together and do what you're now doing how did it all unfold well, I guess it started with um, our mom. She actually sang in a group with her two sisters. So they were three sisters called the Corcoran sisters. And so always like growing up for us, music was always a big part of, of our household and our family gatherings. And um, well, I suppose you kind of were led the way with, with the singing, you were the oldest. Mm. So you kind of started it all like first and mom would be putting us in in different shows like um, the folk theater of Ireland and you know all the things that you would do growing up Irish dancing Dance classes, um, classes, music classes, music classes and um, theater theater yeah and I guess the singing stuck the most because you you were most like passionate about the the singing really I was I wanted to be Celine Dion so bad <laughs> <laughs> if I could be Celine Dion I was made yeah, so like music was there from from the start, really. Yeah. And um, then one day, I think I was six, um, a local music producer decided to drop by our house and he happened to work with our mom and her two sisters when they were younger. So this guy appeared out of nowhere. He said he had a music studio, which was like five minutes from our house. And did we want to come by and experiment with a, recording a few songs? And sure, we were like beside, totally. beside ourselves <laughs> we couldn't believe it we were like oh my god yeah and so, where, was the, where did this happen this happened where exactly in causeway in causeway in, in Kerry. yeah okay 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 that's tracks for those okay. that it's pretty that, famous that around, right now yeah yeah around the area a lot, he would do he would record a lot, a lot of, of um irish, irish country irish artists. musicians yeah mm. yeah and, um so the, yeah, that the the love for it was really born. Then out of that, he kind of helped to like develop us and and craft us. And um, we just yeah, we worked with him doing. We did, uh, but I suppose how over the, years the three of us as a group together. came apart, what came together was um, yeah, this audition for Louis Walsh. He was looking for um, boy band actually, and I just got annoyed because he was always looking for boy bands, and I was like, what about girl bands? You know what the hell? So. <laughs> Uh, then my sister, my nay, came up with the idea. She was like, why don't you go audition for it? I mean, you'll stand out. <laughs> so I was like, you know what? That's a really good idea. So I said, but I said, I'm, I'm going to have to be able to get in there. I'm going to have to dress up as a boy. So I did. I went all the way up to Dublin. I think it was the pod. It was called at the time. Yeah. I don't know what it's called now. Yeah. And I went in and I dressed up as a boy and I got stopped going in. And the guy was like, you know, this is on an audition for, for guys. And I was like, I am a boy. And he's like, oh my God, I'm so sorry. It's like, yeah. <laughs> and, then, <laughs> and then I got to the top and we had to line up. So I lined up with like two other or four other guys and I was in the middle. And when it got to me, I just took off my hat and took off my jumper. And everyone was like, ah, because I think everyone was everyone a bit knew. worried <laughs> that I was having a bit of a, a crisis, you know, with yeah. what, was I a boy or was I a girl? But uh, yeah, so then... Um, Louis was like oh you know it was great and he put me on to his uh what was his name I forget Dermot. his name Dermot Dermot McAvoy and he was like you know what Fiona you know what you need to do you need to um he knew you had he two knew sisters. I had two sisters he was like you need to get your two sisters and sing together because he was like the the solo market is saturated right now because it was the time when Celine Dion was out 
And um, so, and that's how it began. I was like, she came home and she said, Hey, you guys are in my group. You're in my group, whether you like it or not. (laughs) What age were you when that happened? What age was that? I was 17. Okay. Okay. And there were like three years ago, you know. Okay. You're the oldest though. So you led the whole thing. You got the whole band together. Okay. Brilliant. Brilliant. And did you live in the States for a while? What was the story there? Or just to and fro all your lives? How does that flow? Well, mom is, mom's American, well, Irish American, but she grew up there with her two sisters. So when I, I was born there because she was trying to go back. She had come back to Ireland. She'd met our dad because our dad's from here in Kerry. And she wanted to go back then before she had me. So she went back, tried to stay there. We, I think I was till I was four and then that didn't happen. She came back, she was like, no, Ireland's better. So when then she came back to Ireland. Yeah, it was like a whole series back of back and, and, and forth, forth, back and forth. Okay. Then we tried again when we were in our twenties, we tried to go there. Well, yeah, I was in my teens. You were in your teens. Yeah. yeah. And you're based here now. You're based in Kerry now. Facing yeah, we came now, back yeah. now. Yeah. yeah. Cool. Okay. So then I just want to talk a little bit about the music and how you feel when you perform. So we spoke before we came on about your recent uh, performance in the Hill of Tara. But the the theme with the magazine, the last one that we did, the one that's out now, Bruce Lipton and uh, on the cover, the theme that we looked at was transcendence. And we interviewed a cool guy as well. It's based in Kerry called Michael Keegan Dolan, who's an amazing choreographer. And I wanted to get to the heart of this whole. You know, when you're in the, because I acted a few years as well, I've I've been on stage myself a few times. So this moment where you go into a place where you completely transcend time and you just, you just, just go into a transcendent space. It's like you're channeling. It's like you just, you don't care what anybody's thinking. You're just in the zone, right? So can you tell me the three top moments, like just we'll take three for an example, where that's happened for all three of you, where you just felt like, wow, we're so in the zone right now. This is like, otherworldly what comes to mind yeah um one for me in particular actually was a a local gig that we did it was for um adapt which is for you know um domestically abused women and children so we did a a performance for them and what the last song that we finished with was never walk alone Mm -hmm. and i it sticks out to me still in this moment there was just I don't know, was it the energy of all the women in the room and, and what they were doing to empower and, mm-hmm. and help all the women and children and then to sing a song with the lyrics of like, never walk alone, you know? Mm-hmm. It, and I remember it, mm-hmm. I, for me, I just went into this moment where it was like, it was like going mm-hmm. into the souls mm-hmm. of everybody to remind them that, you know, they're never alone. And I just, I, my whole body was shaking after we after we finished got a singing. We too. we got a standing ovation for for that song. Um, I think because it singing it it made us so emotional. Yeah. Um, just the whole meaning behind it and yeah, just it was just a yeah. It was it was incredible. you could feel because the minute we finished, everybody stood up and clapped. So you could it was like a real feeling of like wow, we were all so connected. Yeah, in that room together. Yeah, like, you knew it was like, about yeah, it. you knew was it was moving into the the hearts was of, yeah, of was, everybody was in concerned. in that moment. Yeah, it was cool. You know. Yeah. Wow. And Fiona, do you have one that you remember vividly? I have two actually. Um, I the personally when we were doing the last our own album, uh, the Chakra Journey, which was literally with the crystal bowls and just channeling. Um, it was the three of us sitting around and before we um, record, we would just tune in. We would all just tune into our, our womb spaces actually and just like clear everything out so that whatever wanted to come through would come through and we would just sit there and Nay would just play one of the, the chakra. See, crystal each of the bowls. crystal bowls are connected to the chakras within our body. So she would play one and we would decide if it was going to be male or female. And we would just sit there and we would just literally, she'd turn on record and we would just go into this space. And it was just like, time didn't exist really when Mm -hmm. we were doing it, Mm -mm. you know? And I think a lot of the feedback that people have told us is like listening to the album, they are going into this space that we were going into when we were recording it. So it was really, it was really interesting. Wow. Beautiful. Yeah. And the other time I had was we were 
again, they're all kind of inspirational spiritual songs, aren't they? Yeah. Uh, was Let It Be. We used to sing Let It Be um, with Women of Ireland when we were on tour. And uh, they used to have this um, aerialist at the back. And when we would sing Let It Be and we'd, we'd go to this real high part within the music, the aerialist would come would down drop. and drop down. And it was like, oh, just every time the audience was like, oh, and then we'd go up to the high notes. It was like amazing. <laughs> It's such a beautiful song though, isn't it? That song, it's really, yeah. it's Incredible. just got it all, you know? And I love All You Need Is Love as well, you know, when people yeah. sing it. Uh, there's a guy called Jack Harrison who used to come in and do events with us and he would sing that song and it was just so beautiful in a Kirtan kind of style, you know, Kirtan. Right. But they're lovely moments to share. Thank you for that. Thank you for that. So um, I want to get on to some of the um, stuff that have Bruno Mars. Okay, so you worked, with, you worked a bit with him or something or... Um, yeah, he's the guy who said you sound like angels, and I said you, you feel like you're in a fairy tale. Tell us yeah. about working with Bruno Mars. What was that like, and how did that come about? Well, it was actually before he was Bruno Mars. Yeah. So yeah. I had, we were living in Los Angeles at the time, and I had a friend who worked for, he was an AR, which is like a, a talent recruiter for Universal Music. So he was like, hey, we're down in the studio tonight. Do you guys want to come through? So we were like, yeah, sure, why not? And we came in and we still remember the moment we walked into this room because there was a guy sitting in the corner and you know, sometimes you just like meet someone and it's like their presence is like yeah. huge. Yeah. Now, he, and he wasn't even Bruno Mars at the time, but so, you know, we were obviously calm, cool and relaxed about the whole thing. We thought we were just meeting these guys in the studio. Yeah. <laughs> and so we were having chats about you know, Ireland and he, he even played like a little song on his guitar, he was like three Irish sisters, and yeah. I don't know, I don't even know what he sang, but he like totally even. made it up. Yeah. And uh, yeah, so we just we all hung out together like that night, and we're just like messing around creating um, different music. And I remember when we left the studio, we sang for him though. I think that's oh why, yeah, yeah, we sang, we sang for him, and he was like, oh my god, you guys are like Irish angels. <laughs> uh, and, um, so then when when we left, when we left yeah. I remember we said, oh my God, whoever that guy is, he's, he's a us. star. Yeah, he's a star. He's we an absolute it. star. Yeah. He's like incredible yeah. presence. And then it was about six months later, mm. we heard. He, heard him on, he asked us to go to his gigs as well, but we ended up going to someone else's gig, didn't we? Probably. I mean, now you're like, <laughs> why didn't we go to the gig? Because, <laughs> you know, they give, because in when you're living in LA, you know, and there's all these promoters, they'll give you tickets yeah. today, whatever. Yeah. We would have been, we would have been got nice tickets to his we show. Would, we got tickets, yeah. We didn't go, we went to someone else's gig. No. Like, what the hell? Yeah. And then six months <laughs> later, his, um, I want to be, no. I want to be a yeah. billionaire or millionaire, which is a billionaire. I want to be yeah. a billionaire. Yeah. Everyone was like, hey, we met that I was like, guy. That's, that's the guy we in the studio. He was like, she was like, that's Bruno Mars. And then he became Bruno Mars. Yeah. 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 So give him a buzz now, right? Find out what's up. Yeah, we'll see. See, does he remember <laughs> us? He was there with his friend, though, wasn't it? We were waiting to his friend to Phil. Was it Phil? Mm, I don't remember. Phil, I think it was Phil or something. No. Wow, that's amazing. That's amazing. And you've you've performed all around the world, you know. But recently, I wanted to ask you about performing at the Hill of Tara, and yeah. um, because I was there myself, but I got there after your gig, so I'll kick myself. Um, but I'll definitely get to see you at some point. But tell me what it was like that particular day um, performing at the Hill of Tara and how you approached it. Well, how did it come about? Well, it was Enda, you know, Enda Donnellan. He actually, yeah. um, he messaged us and he said, hey, do you want to be part of the Solstice event on Tara? We actually didn't even think too much about it. We were just <laughs> like, yeah, we're supposed, yeah, cool, yeah, we'll be there. We'll Sounds be there. good. Yeah. <laughs> And then it, he was like, oh, what, I didn't know what he say, what do you guys, what are you guys going to do on the day? Or like, what's the plan? And I, I just got a notion because we had done the Chakra album last year where we just channeled from the moment. Yeah. And I just thought like being on the hill of Tara, that's going to be yeah. the perfect place to like, just tune in and allow whatever wants to come out, come out. Because that's, for me, that's the most healing really when the, when the mind's not involved and you're just in your heart space. Mm. So um, we were like, you know what, this, that's what we're going to do. Yeah. We're not going to plan anything. So we don't know what we're going to do. We're going to go and do whatever's in the moment in the flow. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, that was kind of our first live performance. Uh, Doing that. Yeah. Just not having anything planned. Yeah. Just literally <laughs> trusting the unknown. Yeah, trusting the unknown. And um, 
yeah, just we sat on the on the ground for it and we played the the crystal bowls and we kind of got lost really in yeah. in the moment. Totally. And it was we were, we were both shaking after we, we were finished. We were like, yeah. I think the energy was like we we I felt it was like the hot. energy was coming it up was through like, the ground. It was. It, it actually was. You yeah. could feel it coming up through your body. It's like sitting, very powerful energy sitting on on mm -hmm. that on that on the earth, you know, there. Yeah. yeah. And um, it's funny because I had been to Tara a few times before, and I didn't quite feel it as strong mm. as I did on the day of the solstice. So yeah. we just we just did whatever came to us for mm. for the thirty minutes, and um, yeah, like Fiona said, we were kind of a bit. I was in a bit of a daze. I was like, yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. So, and I, I think that is, uh, you know, an indication that it was from from a place that is beyond, you know. Yeah, and just as uh, I'm just wondering, have you performed at any other sacred sites around the world that you can remember? Um, uh, say, have you performed at sacred sites? No, it's actually something we've really wanted to do, and last yeah. year. We were like, oh, we should do that. But of course we were in lockdown. And then when we came out of lockdown, I think we were so distracted by the fact that we were out of lockdown that we didn't, we did, then didn't go ahead with that idea. <laughs> That's just something like, yeah, we've, we've been, been talking for about well, it for like a while. To, yeah. to go to the, to the sacred sites and, and, channel, and channel something from each of them. Yeah, the just see what comes spontaneously. Yeah. That'd be yeah. a nice little tour, wouldn't it? That'd be an amazing tour. Lovely, yeah. lovely definitely, tour, yeah. yeah. Definitely. I think and, that's um, so or, um sorry that singer Dea Dova you know Dea Dova yeah she goes to she the sacred sites all around oh, right. the world. yeah, okay. yeah. And, and her music's incredible yeah it's powerful I get a similar vibe there was a lady that played a gig with us before a positive nights called Pia Bird did you ever hear of that lady by any chance ah yeah, yes yes yeah so uh, she's she does she does Celtic music as well I yeah, think. yeah 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 yeah, she sings a song called Machi Machi, I think. Yeah. She does all these kind of folk songs from different parts of the world, you know. Oh, so I, yeah. I was I was interviewing her and then she said she would sing live sitting beside me on the stage. And I remember interviewing her and she was, you know, nice to interview, but she was just a normal person. And then when she starts singing, yeah, I just felt like God was on the stage sitting beside me. It was like right. she went into this zone. Yeah. And as you said earlier about the channeling thing, yeah. she just became this other being. It was unbelievable. When you yeah. to sit right beside someone performing is kind of weird, though, because normally you're yeah. looking at them performing. Mm -hmm. So it was actually really special to have that, you know. So that's yeah. the feeling I get when I see you, when I see you guys perform. It's oh, just wow. like, wow, it's like kind of otherworldly, you know. Yeah. So I want to talk about the new album now. So it's coming out. You're going to be able to get a physical copy in September, but you can download right now on, or you can listen on Spotify right now. Yeah. And it's called Chakra. It's called Chakra, yeah? The, the Chakra, chakra journey. journey. So it's a journey okay. through seven chakras, male and female aspects of each of the chakras. Okay, okay. And um, tell us why you decided to bring out an album in relation to the chakras right now. What was the inspiration? Well, uh, actually, we were asked by the O'Neill brothers. They're two brothers that play piano. Um, they were they were in, they wanted more music for their um, playlist playlists, and they were like, "Would you ever consider doing something with the Crystal Bowls?" And we were like, "Oh yeah, okay." And the first thing that came to us was the chakra. We again, we get these ideas and we go on about them for years because we're such <laughs> complete procrastinators. And then when the O'Neill brothers were like, will you do something? We're like, well, okay, let's do this idea that we've had for years. And um, yeah, that's, that's how it came about. And, and, and we had worked with, I don't know if you know, Huna Flash um, with his Lemurian. He came last year and, and we, we did his workshop of all about the Lemurian chakras, which were the 24 different chakras. But the reason they're 24 is it's because the 12 chakras having the male and, and female, female aspect. aspect. So I guess that's where we got the idea of like, oh, we could do the male and female aspect of the chakras. Of the chakra. um, but we just but they decided- they kind of had been kind of just on board for us anyway, because we teach yoga as well. And we had also done a, yeah. we taught a, a chakra yoga series. So I feel like it was just, it was in the, like yeah. in the field for yeah. all of us, like at the same time, mm. just about like healing the chakras, mm. you know, to bring, Kind of goes back to that bring us back to all the, the time though doesn't it zero point yeah, yeah. Mm. You know, it's, it's it's that healing and stuff yeah yeah and 
I know you're very spiritual. You can just, it just bounces off you. You can feel the vibes, you know? So as three sisters, what's it like? Like, what's it like to be so close, to work together so much? What's the vibe of that? You know, you mean, you know each other so well, right? So what's the vibe working with your, your, your sisters? What's that like? It's like, it's a, it's a weave. Do you know what I mean? Like, as in we're woven, you know, as in, somebody does this thing but then somebody will do this it's hard to explain it's like yeah. it's like a wave as well it's like a woven tapestry that's like how i would describe it that's how the easiest way i could describe it it's kind of energetic you know it feels like an energetic way it's like it a frequency is. yeah i remember um anisha marjani she had a famous near-death experience and she said exactly that that she looked at all of us and saw a tapestry saw a tapestry of light and how every time you do something or I do something, that it's interlinked. There's something yeah. synergistic going on, you know? That's it, yeah. So I want to talk about consciousness and where you think things are going right now. Do you like the look of what's happening on the planet right now? We won't talk about that, what's happening right now. But in terms of, do you feel that consciousness, you can talk about whatever you want, but do you feel consciousness is shifting somewhere better? Yeah, it's it's. You know, I know a lot of people could say it's nerve wracking, whatever else. I, for me, I think it's exciting. Um, and this whole time, it's been exciting because, you know, I think it's going to catapult. It's going to catapult the, con the consciousness of the collective, I feel. Mm. Um, you know, because you, if you read a lot of things, there's a lot of, um, I guess, prophecies as to what this time is about and things like that. Mm -hmm. And... Um, you know, I, I guess it's end of days, but you know, end of day, end of days is just a rebirth, like a renaissance. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I just feel probably that's collectively what we're going through is a renaissance. You yeah. know, and it's painful because it's like it's a rebirth, and we've been doing rebirth breath work actually the last three years. So it's like <laughs> on a collective level, we're rebirthing, and and it's funny because our sister is having a baby so it's like for us it's you know it's, been, it's labor present, pains yeah. you know that it's not it's messy it's chaotic it's painful it's you know but that's what's happening and and uh, and again it's like sometimes you know not sometimes but most of the time something has to be torn apart before it can come back together yeah you know and i do feel like it may feel like it's being separated like yeah, like deeply right now, but I feel like it's it's going it's separating. It's going to be at its max before it moves back to to unify. I think we are moving into yeah. a more out of the separate consciousness into Unity. the one consciousness. You know, even though it feels like and may seem like it's being separated that is happening essentially but it's happening for it to come back together yeah and i feel if like that makes sense yeah, yeah like the metaphor you're describing is kind of reminds us always of the kind of the butterfly thing you know the imaginal cells the caterpillar yeah. you know we did we did that as a cover on the mag a few years ago and i just thought it was okay. the most amazing i mean what a transformation you know as a caterpillar you know i mean he's nice i like caterpillars you know yeah, but then yeah, yeah. it turns into a butterfly and it's like wow you know that's so that's so where we're at that's so funny that you mentioned that because the butterfly and we've literally been talking about the butterfly and the caterpillar like so much the last couple yeah, of weeks yeah because it keeps coming the symbology. up symbology keeps coming up for us so mm. yeah that's yeah. exactly so it'd be great if you gave us a couple of songs you want to give us one or do you want to give us two songs how do you feel well again we were thinking we were just gonna just channel and okay out and kind of more like as in a sound close, feeling. close your eyes and relax and you know Okay, see what comes. And uh, before we go into that, what's your plans now? Do you feel for the for for are you going to do concerts? What's coming up for you for you now in the next while? Well, uh, well, I'll I'll answer it for for me, and then you can answer it for you. I am currently throwing plans out the window because for me, plans are keeping you out of the present moment. So I am literally devoting myself to being in the present moment so you're feminine alive i i i can't answer that <laughs> right now <laughs> i can answer that <laughs> let me answer that <laughs> so 
So we're ha- we have our chakra album coming out in September, and we actually are working with Peter Hollins, who is um, very well known online. We have a Celtic. He's remixed some of our Celtic songs and remashed it and put it together with other artists, and that's coming out soon. We're not too sure. We're thinking it might be September as well. Um, so that's really going to be really exciting. We also have cruises booked at the end of the year. We're not sure if that's going to happen. And also then we're looking towards possibly 2022, 2023. We'd love to put together sound healing retreats, um, sound healing yoga retreats and maybe sacred spots around the world. That's what we're trying to um, yeah, manifest at the moment. And we'd love to get back to doing our shows, of course, as well. But we don't, yeah. know, if that, we don't know if that's going to be available, so... That was a real contrast in answers there. I love that. That was like the management came in to tell what the plans are for the band. And the kind of new age member was like, you know, I'm just going to see what happens. You're the man. you got the manager vibe. I love it. Um, <laughs> it's funny. I remember years ago, we got a, we got a big interview with Deepak Chopra, right? Oh, yeah. And I used to work with this dude and he was real new age head, you know. And um, I rang him. I said, we got an interview with Deepak Chopra, but you got to go down and meet him in this hotel. And you got to be there in an hour. And he said, hey, man, I live in the now. And the now is telling me, my guides are telling me that I got to go to the park and chill out in the sun. And I was like, listen, dude, you got to tell your guides that you go to meet Deepak oh. Chopra. <laughs> And I remember the two of us at loggerheads, but we both just start laughing. And he rang me back 20 minutes later and he said, okay, my guide said I better go and meet Deepak Show. <laughs> it, was just, it was just a hilarious moment, you know. That's I love like that. kind of what will happen between <laughs> totally, totally. <laughs> and you said, I'm just staying in the now. I just love it. You know, as I said earlier, you know, uh, don't do any preparation. You know, it's such a great spiritual advanced thought, but it's also a great way to be totally do nothing and be lazy. I love it. Yeah, yeah that could yeah. happen too. But I feel like, you know, you'll take, you'll know the moment when to take the action. You, do. you just have yeah. to, to wait and trust, like wait to respond to yeah. that because the moment will come and then you take the action. Yeah. You know, no, there's a real, when you spoke earlier about feeling like how you, you, you said it was like a wave between you. It's a bit like what's going on for humanity right now. You just feel this sovereignty rising within you, this kind of feel. It's like, you know, what's going on. You don't need to get into it. You know, you just kind of, you just kind of, you just kind of hold that space and it just flows out of you, you know? And yeah. I can see, you know, people who are picking that up, you know, I can see their, yeah. I can see it, you know, in their eyes. Yeah, but straight so- more than anything, isn't it? It's mm-hmm. like being, you know, people say, oh, light workers. It's like, oh, no, it's actually, that's a good, that's a good description of being a space holder, really, isn't it? For the collective. Space worker. Space holder. Space holder. Space holder. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant. Brilliant. Yeah. Okay. So uh, go ahead and channel. Let's see what comes up. Oh, well, um, cool. Yeah. Whatever. What one's that? That's the you, where's the root? Don't have it. Ah, uh, I love my root. <laughs> <laughs> I'm higher today. I'm going higher. Okay. Mm. You go for it. I'll let you. I'll let you take the lead here. Mm-hmm. So just close your eyes okay. and feel the weight of your body, feel your feet, your ankles, your calves, and let them sink and melt down into the ground. And feel your thighs, your hips, your stomach, and your chest, and let them sink deeper and deeper into the ground. sink deeper and deeper into the ground, let them melt all the way down to the center, into the core of the earth.
Thank you so much. That was beautiful. Wow. Completely zoned out. Yeah. How did that feel? I don't know. I just get this rush of energy through my body every time I do that. Yeah. It's, uh, how does it feel? Unbelievable. Okay. The same thing you do when you do breath work. I feel like I feel, it just feels like all. It feels like nothing, but not in yeah the sense of nothing. Mm. Mm. Okay. Okay. So, um, thanks everybody for tuning in. Um, we're going to have an article on the uh, O'Neill sisters in the next issue of Positive Life, um, which is out in the autumn. Um, just felt like we needed to have you in there for some reason. I don't know why. Um, Louise Clue. Uh, Louise Clue is a good buddy of mine, and she said she had a dream. You need to ring the O'Neill sisters, and I said, "Okay, okay, I'll get around to it." <laughs> oh no way I love the place yeah. such a cool. have you been to that place the Aloha I've oh, done all my oh, training yeah. with Louise yeah I've done yeah. all the Lomi training it's the Lomi Lomi what's that like I mean I try to explain that to people it's like love in action you know you know what Amazing. it's the same as singing these bowls yeah. it really is it's, it's total presence mm. and it, there's no words to describe it I would I would recommend everyone to go, even if you didn't want to be a Lomi Lomi practitioner, it's honest, honest to God, life changing. Yeah, she keeps saying it to me. I'll have to go and do it. Oh, well, have you not, have you not tried it? Oh my God, it's unbelievable. She has, no, Eve has done, she actually owes me six, six <laughs> sessions. I'm owed six Lomi <laughs> sessions, but she tells me to go train in it. She's like, you need to train in it. Well, not even like, train in it. You have to experience it as a retreat because yeah, yeah. I mean, it's just a yeah. gift to your body and your soul. I just, when I go, I stay there a good few times, you know, I've been down there a few times and um, it's almost embarrassing. I mean, after you get a treatment, you just can't, you can't, I don't know, I can't, it seems so deep and intimate. It's almost like you just can't believe. Yeah. You kind of see Louise in the corridor. I can't look at you, I can't look at you. <laughs> I need to get over that. I need to get over that. You know? Yeah. Um, yeah. Which is a beautiful, they have a beautiful family and such a beautiful place. So. Anybody watching, if you haven't been to Aloha House, get down there, check that place out. And where are you, where are you both living in Kerry now? What part of Kerry are you? We're, we're in, in, North we're in Kerry. Causeway, North Kerry. So okay. we're, we're about 40 minutes from Killorglin mm. from Aloha House. Okay. Okay. Yeah. Such a beautiful county though, isn't it? It's amazing. Phenomenal. Yeah. yeah. It's, I love it. It's really special. It. Mm. Yeah. Kingdom here. Mm. <laughs> Brilliant. Listen, thanks for chatting to us today. Really appreciate it. It's great thanks to for having thank us you for having and us thanks on. to Louise. <laughs> and hopefully this, this this song was what you expected. Because I know sometimes when people want they want songs and then they get this, it's kind of like oh, it's perfect. It's perfect. Absolutely okay. perfect. From the management and the space cadet <laughs> or the space. <laughs> We call ourselves the dynamic duo. The dynamic duo. Yeah. <laughs> we just want to say. Can we yeah, say, good, luck, can we good, luck, sorry. good luck to our middle sister nay we're so looking forward and hopefully everything goes so well yes, inside the hospital journey. today on her journey to motherhood beautiful is this yes. the first baby of the trip have, have anybody else got a baby here I no? have a son he's 11 so oh wow okay, okay. Yeah, yeah. long time coming for this grandchild <laughs> that's so cool and i'm interested to know naomi what's her personality like in, in, in the three of you if one of you there you know, no, I'm just happy there about the answers. She's, what would you say? she's like the balance. Yeah, Nay. So we're like this. We're the, if there's a seesaw, myself. Nay, Nay, Nay balances the both Nay's of us out. <laughs> <laughs> like, well, like we had this. We had this. Um, we had this NFL NFL player. Yeah, he's a big, tall, massive NFL player come in and listen to us sing one time, and he was like, "You the sanger, you the riffer, and he was well, Nay, you the keep the toner." He's like, you, you, you keep the toner. You keep the toner. <laughs> and she hated that. She was like, keep the toner. What the hell is that? But she gets it now. She yeah, gets yeah. it now. <laughs> That's a good description. I love it. I love it. It's hilarious, though, the way you answered that question to me when I said, what are your plans? It's just a classic interview question. You know, what are your plans? I don't have any plans. <laughs> okay. <laughs> okay, okay. Yeah. That's the end of the interview. So, okay. Okay. Thank you. Hey, lovely chatting to you both. See you. Here. Bye. 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 Bye.